Hello! I uh, figured I'd like to do a little discussion about booktube relationships. Uh, it's something that I've sort of just recently come to a little bit of a realization about, and it helped me kind of relax a little bit about my interactions on booktube, and I figured I'd share that. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I, I'd like to I'd like to share that. There's there's a couple of videos going around at the moment. Uh, Brian at Bookish um, talking about kind of BookTube as a utopia, and uh, Kelly at uh, Books I'm Not Reading doing a video on what you define as a BookTube success. And this is sort of my little slice slice of the thing. And I should start off by saying that this is not a new conversation. I think kind of relationships on media in general, social media in general, have been kicking it around for a long time. And on YouTube itself, I think this is a well, well furrowed, uh, well plowed, plowed furrow. Um, but I figured I'd just th talk about this little, my little corner of book BookTube. Um, Brian kind of made fun, you know, saying like, oh, how many times I say that. I mean, I think when you say my little corner of BookTube, we all have our own particular little corners. There's somebody who probably figures giantly into what I consider BookTube that you've never heard of and vice versa. You know, we all make our own communities, individuals, each individual makes their own community. Um, I mean, a part of the thing is you probably, if you have interests like you're totally into literary fiction or you're totally into science fiction, uh, you can find people who kind of gr cluster together and you, you all do seem to have your own little corner. But of course, it's all it's all imaginary made up stuff. But uh, there's there's that. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about um, how I, I guess, how I relate and how I'm, I'm starting, starting to conceive about how I kind of relate to people. Uh, two people on on booktube uh, you know from from sort of one on people who I've had like one on one communications with uh, people you know I just sort of I chat with in in comments field people I you know I've swapped sort of we swap videos we've we've kind of chatted chatted that way even the very rare instances where I've actually gone off of YouTube I'm very much just a single single media person a person I only I only watch YouTube I've actually had the rare instance of going off and like you know using Voxer or something like that to actually talk one-on-one -on -one with people so there's all that and I I hear that some people actually take this kind of this YouTube booktube thing even further and actually meet in the flesh which you know I I hear it happens I you know I'm just in this room all all alone with Theo um, my my Havanese I I have no no conception of that but I hear that that happens as well um, so, you know, there's all that, which is sort of, you know, it's very much the kind of the individual stuff. There's also just that stuff of like, you know, I am, I am an audience member as well of, there's some people that I, I watch their videos, but I don't have that kind of inter, that, that kind of personal interaction with them. It's, it's strictly, I'm sort of, I'm in the audience. I enjoy their videos. You know, maybe I leave a comment or two, but I, I, I don't know if I would consider it to be, um, uh, we would have any any sorts of relationship. I have a relationship of I'm an audience member, um, and that in itself is an interesting interesting relationship. Uh, I think that's where there's there's that there's the thing of uh, for BookTube, especially because this little corner of BookTube where you have relatively low subscriber numbers, low amounts of number of people who are uh, you're having co you have comments with, you can have like kind of interactions with people on a one on one level who are who are who are commenters on videos. And those are those can be some of the great things, people who are not comfortable making videos, but you know, watch your videos for whatever reason, and you have one and one one on one interactions with them, and uh, that's one of those things I'm really happy um, restarting myself that I've gotten back into that to be able to have those kind of interactions, and those have, you know, even this super early days that's begun, and that's that is really rewarding and really valuable, but. Uh, even on this little corner, what I consider a little corner of BookTube, there are people uh, who ha who their their audience numbers. Uh, the people who just interact with their videos, you're not even let's set aside subscribers, but the people who interact with their videos gets to such a large degree uh, that it is, it, it slides from being like, oh, I'm just like a person making a video for a couple of people and I can talk to those couple of people to being, I'm a performer up on stage and, um, the people, I, my audience is so large that I don't 
you wouldn't have time to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with them. It becomes very much more the dynamic of uh, an audience. And um, the funny thing about watching people's videos, because I'm very much in this situation myself, if there's some people I watch, it's like, oh, they're too busy. They've got way too many people they're already talking to. I'm happy being an audience member. But you get into that feeling of like, oh, I know these pe I know this person. I'm their friend in a weird sort of way, which isn't, uh, I actually, this person knows who I am from Adam or who I've ever had a conversation with. It's like, no, I've, but I spend hours a day watching their videos and getting to share in, um, the parts of their life that they're, they're comfortable sharing. And, you know, that is where we go from it being kind of social media, one-on-one -on -one kind of thing to being, uh, it's, it's, it's media. It's, uh, and you, you go into a parasocial relationship with these sorts of people. Um, Wikipedia scholarship, uh, parasocial interaction, PSI, refers to a kind of psychological relationship experienced by an audience in their mediated encounters with performers in the mass media, particularly on television and online platforms. Viewers or listeners come to consider media personalities as friends, despite having no or limited interaction with them. PSI is described as an illusionary experience, such that media audiences interact with personas, uh, and then they list, list a whole bunch, including social media influencers, uh, as if they were engaged in a reciprocal relationship with them. And this is a term that was coined by uh, Donald Horton and Richard Wall in 1956. So, you know, it's not, it is not a, not a new thing at all, but um, it's interesting that you can now, it's gotten to the level of with social media that that can happen to somebody who's probably, you know, goes to work and stuff like that, but happens to have a channel that also happens to have 10,000, 10,000 subscribers and like, you know, thousands and thousands of people watch their videos every day and interact and they feel like they're kind of friends. And I mean, that's a part of the appeal. Cause like, I know I'm, I, I've engaged in the, those kind of relationships um, with people where you're like, oh, I, I wonder what they're doing today. It's like, it's a part of the appeal. It's like you, you like the person, you develop a kind of an emotional attachment to them and that, that kind of develops. And that can be a really positive thing that can bring a lot of uh, happiness and joy into, into life. Uh, if you're someone like me, who's like an introvert and you don't have a lot of like outside friends, that's actually kind of like a really cool thing. Or, you know, if you're, <laughs> If you're perhaps a actually regular, well-adjusted person who has plenty of friends on the outside world, but if you're something like books, where, oh, I don't have any friends who like books, so I can kind of develop relationships, either one-on-one -on -one relationships or these kind of parasocial relationships where I feel like, I oh, I've got company for that. I've got company for this, this part of my interest. And it sometimes... It's funny how that interest can kind of fall away and like, you know, the, the personality that you're, you're watching, um, may not be somebody that you actually, you know, I don't actually like what they read, but I really like the person and I, I really enjoy getting that. And it's like, it's something I would have never be, I would never get otherwise. Uh, probably, you know, a lot of times, even if you know, the, knew these people in person, um, you'd probably never get the chance to sort of sit down with them and start chatting about books. So there could be tons of people who I work with at work who are totally into books, but they're not sharing that. I'm not sharing that with them. We're there to do a job and then go home and leave, live our, live our uh, isolated lives. Um, you know, I was thinking about this because uh, we've definitely, in my little corner of, of BookTube, we've definitely hit that level where uh, people have audiences and... Uh, you know, people really care about the people they're watching. And uh, if there's some conflict that comes up, people get really riled up. And it's like, you're getting really riled up about a person having a co conflict with somebody else. They may know each other and may, you know, there may actually be a beef there. Or, you know, maybe they're just like, you know, they've glancingly hit each other on some kind of a little feud or an argument over something. But it, it, we, you know, as the audience start getting really involved in this. And uh, I think there's a part of me that got kind of upset about that at the beginning, about like all these people kind of um, weighing in with their, their, their opinions, the very strong opinions about this person doing this wrong thing. And um, kind of like a little bit freaked out by that. Um, and... I think it's it's taken me a little while, you know, slow learner here to kind of go with, oh, 
this isn't because we're, you know, and I know, you know, people have discovered this on Twitter and stuff like that a long time ago, but, you know, just that idea of, of like, oh, people are picking sides. This could be uh, Marvel and DC, if you know uh, the film, the film industry, where people pick the size of one corporation over the, the side of another corporation and have amazingly kind of strong, passionate feelings of why DC sucks or Marvel sucks. Um, you know, obviously it's indie indie artists who you should be uh, you should be rooting for. But let's let's not get in let's not dive down in that one. Um, but um, you know, and in, in some ways, that's an uh, from the outside looking in on uh, on a thing like that, or maybe Apple or PC of people getting so kind of um, focused on that. You standing from the outside, you can see how ridiculous that is because it's corporations that people are investing their uh, emotional emotional time in that they're they're caring they're they're defending this corporation that is i have to say when i look at people getting really upset about one booktuber over another booktuber which isn't to reduce them to soulless corporations it's like you probably know as much about these individuals booktubers as you do about these soulless co corporations um and that that's helped me. That's helped me have a little bit of distance in my um, booktube interactions, and just you know the thing of people are people. So you know people can be having an off day. People can get um, you know can suddenly seem to snap at you because maybe you've misworded something, or because they we have different vocabularies. Um, I do still have that thing with text messages of like tone. It's like trying to joke through text messages, it seems to be like a really bad thing. Uh, there's a reason why I probably like videos is like, I feel like I can, I can get a tone across. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not coming to any great grand earth shattering conclusions with all this stuff. This is all at the end of the day, this is probably all, Oh, let's all wait while jaw <laughs> Jay kind of figures this stuff out and pat him on the head afterwards. But, um, it's just, I guess it's just to kind of keep, keep that in mind that uh, we have on our, 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 a part of what I think is happening on our little corner of booktube is pl places are getting large enough that, that it's less um, like the individual interactions. They're still there and they're still super valuable. And that's what I, I really love about it. But there is also larger things, uh, large, you know, there's audiences building where it's, it's more about, you know, an audience that's going to really enjoy your video. That's not going to have that individual interaction with you. And sometimes, you know, there's negative things about audiences, audiences as a group can start feeling entitled to people and, uh, can feel upset when they're deprived of what they suddenly feel like they should have this is my this is my imaginary friend and they should be with me every single day and i'm upset because they're not there um but it's like you know no it's these are the these are um individuals that we we don't know that much about really even if we watch hours of them every day you know we get a slice of it. It may be to your taste. It may not be to your taste. And if it isn't, then you just kind of go on because boy, that's the one thing about, um, really ha hammered home to me in the last little while. It's like just how many, how many book tubes there are. And, you know, someone will look at my subscription list and have no idea who the hell these people are. And I'll look at theirs and I won't have any idea. And sometimes that's kind of, that's valuable in itself. It's really good when people, post their uh, subscription lists of who they're subscribed to because you can go, oh, oh, that person's, in, you know, go through it and say, oh, that person's interesting. That's not, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, to quote Letter, Letter Kenny, there's just so much, uh, so much on YouTube in general that there's something for everybody. Um, but it's, it's probably important to kind of, for myself, my own sanity to kind of go with the, okay, you know, there's all these different levels of relationships. There's all these different complications of relationships. There's this weird thing on uh, YouTube in general where there's like power dynamics, uh, which I think sometimes get people in trouble. People, uh, you know, if they were just a, a channel with five subscribers and they were doing something, people would just like, oh, that's a jerk and just toss them. But if it's a person with a lot of subscribers and it's suddenly it's somebody abusing their power where, and that's kind of, that is imaginary in itself and made up, but uh, I definitely, it's stuff that, um, I've acted on, I've acted on, I felt very strongly in the past about, and I mean, you know, 
to be honest, I might still, I'm, I am not exempt from this. I am, I am definitely a goldfish, uh, giving you his report from the, from the, from the fishbowl. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, a goldfish with a slightly little bit more of 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 uh, perspective on the matter. However, once I've done my one rotation, I'll have forgotten it all, and then I'll have to rem have to come back and watch this video again. All right, that has been a long ramble about uh, booktube relationships. <laughs> uh, yeah, no hot singles here. All right, I've been Jay. More videos later.